All right. Uh, what's up, everybody? Kevin here from the home office and day three for us of working from home. And I have Dirk and it's Van Reenen, right? Van Reenen, that's right, yeah. All right, Dirk from IEB. Um, great to see you again, brother. How are you? Man, I'm good. It's uh, it's an interesting time right now. We've we've been having a lot of conversations over the last, you know, five, six days, as I'm sure you guys have too, and just trying to make sense of um, – exactly what's na happening and how to navigate it. So, I mean, we've been full on just engaged over the last five, six days nonstop. I love it. And I can't tell you how excited I was to even just connect with you the other day over text because just in normal times, I think I, what IEB is doing and you as a human is just amazing and a joy to be around with your optimism and action oriented nature. And I think it's in times like this why I was like, yes, let's get on, let's get on a zoom as soon as we can. Um, so just talk about what's going on in your mind and in your world. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that opportunity. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, during times like this, there's, there's just so much data flying around right now, but nobody can really connect the dots of the data enough to like really understand what's happening. So, um, I think there's just a ton of misinformation that flies around. And then with that comes the fear and anxiety and like hysteria. And that's where people make bad decisions. Right. So, um, what, what we're really actively doing right now is just trying to paint a bigger picture of what's happening. And that way people can connect with, uh, Oh, okay. It's, it's not as bad as I think it is. So if you, I think you've taken a much bigger view of it, then it's easier to understand, okay, what's happening right now in the world and how can you navigate that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And our, and you know, our industry, I think typically can be fear-based um, part of it. Um, that's something I know we're both actively working to try to change um, and influence. And so I think we're, yeah, we're definitely at risk for falling to that group think that fear-based mentality. Yeah. I mean, we've, uh, you know, we've had some conversations with inspectors that have already decided like, Hey, I got to just shut my business down completely until this thing's over, you wow. know? And uh, cause, cause I think like, that's the thing is that there, that there's so much fear around like what's going to happen and, you know, it's almost like they would almost just try to cut a hundred percent of all their expenses and clam down and kind of like shelter out the storm versus like learning how to like navigate the storm. Right. So keep on your direction, keep moving forward, just learn how to navigate. Like that's, that's the conversation, right? Yeah. And you guys recently had a, a mastermind and had amazing attendance, right? Do you want to, should we jump into talking about how that went and just kind of the vibe and the feel and what, about yeah, I mean, we started. had a, um, a big annual conference, IEB Unite. We had that in Austin, Texas. Um, had about 140 companies there. And um, again, you guys were there, right? So you saw the caliber of companies that were there. And I mean, it's just when you look at how many large, successful companies we have within IEB and how fast they're growing, and then how fast some of the smaller companies are also growing and like, you know, really moving in that path of trajectory, it's really exciting when you can bring that many companies together. And you can actually have a high level conversation. So we just came off that really high energy. And then, you know, several weeks forward, now we're in this event. And the first thing, I mean, we had, because um, this is when we were texting back and forth last night, we had a call last night. We had 125 companies on that call at one point. And, you know, we went for two hours. And what we did is we, we asked our, our enterprise level members, we've, we've got six companies in our original enterprise group and we're bringing another nine companies up to that level now. And the level, the conversation level in those six companies is unreal. It's just unbelievable because we've, we've been working with these companies now for two years and we've engineered such an incredible conversation based on, you know, abundance, uh, based on, you know, really learning, discovering, building amazing teams, leadership development that what's happening with those companies now is very quickly they can pivot, they can re-engage, they've got amazing leadership teams in place. And what we do is we, you know, um, we, we kind of set that as a stage of like, you know, how we can help the, the other companies in IEB. You know, and we immediately, when, when everything like, which I don't know about you, like for me, like things got real probably last Thursday evening, right? Because I mean, that's when all of a sudden, we were actually in Dallas doing uh, our RGT event. And, you know, one after another, like we were getting these messages because I'm involved in several other organizations as well. And we're getting these messages of like all of these events that are canceling that were supposed to happen this weekend and this week. And, you know, said, okay, hey, this is serious if, if this is happening at the scale of this fast. And, you know, immediately Friday morning, we started triggering conversations with our enterprise level members. And we started talking about, hey, guys, this is probably going to be pretty significant. We need to get together and figure out how we're going to navigate this. 
and we, we had conversations Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we prepped, we told our whole community, hey, Tuesday night, seven o'clock, we're going live, and we did this two hour live event last night that was unbelievable. And like the energy and the focus, and you know, people just saying like, thank you for, you know, kind of having a place where we can come and have a, a sane, calm conversation and really look at what's happening and what do we do from this point forward, right? And we were able to like really help those companies, hey, this is step one, this is step two, right? Really walk through that. So it's really cool when, when we can be part of that. That's huge. Um, and we heard about that. And yeah, hopefully we can dig into either some of the stuff or whatever we're able to Absolutely. dive into. Just I'm, I'm glad to anything that we can, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're, I guess with your mindset, let's, I'm just curious kind of how you have been processing this since Thursday, Friday. Um, yeah, I'm always curious what's going on in your mind in times like this. Yeah, I think like anybody else, man, like when, when you get a lot of information and there's uncertainty, like, man, there's just like this sense of like, like what's going on, right? And I mean, I was struggling with that over the weekend. Um, while we're doing this, you know, I'm, I'm instructing this RGT event, but like while we're doing that, there's like the sense of like feeling of like, man, like I'm just on, I feel like I'm standing on sand right now, right? And I'm trying to like, uh, there's no sure footing. And so I was, I was kind of processing that. And you know, what, what I did is I, I just kind of triggered some conversations with some, some mentors of mine that um, are very successful and, and wealthy businessmen. And, you know, we're able to kind of get their perspective because they've been through a lot. They've seen a lot. Um, and, you know, I'm in another group called GoBundance. I think, I don't know if we've ever talked about that, but, you know, we had a call Monday night with GoBundance guys. And I mean, we had, you know, I think about 80 or 90, you know, guys on there. And I mean, these are all highly successful entrepreneurs from around the country. Um, even some international as well. And, you know, being in those environments, like really kind of helped me come to center on what I was dealing with. Because if I was even looking at my immediate environment for evidence of what's working or what's going right, like it was it, like, it was conflicting me, right? It was, it was, it was causing me to move towards fear and anxiety versus walking towards like uh, a calmness and a presence and a confidence. Right. So, um, you know, after that call Monday night, uh, my wife and I had an amazing conversation after that. We had like a two hour conversation and, you know, I just kind of laid out to her, you know, so that she's kind of aware of like what this means and what this could mean, you know, for, uh, for our family, for our business. And, I, and, you know, and I told her, I said, look, our mission right now is like, we got to make sure that our clients can like, you know, that they can weather the storm, that they are ready for what's coming. Right. We're, we're going to be fine that we got to make sure that our, that the people that we work with are too. And like, man, like in, in a short amount of time, this alignment just came and like I found my centeredness and my confidence. And then I knew I was ready to lead from that point forward. And so, you know, we really just jumped in and started having a lot of conversations and we're seeing now that that sense of calmness and confidence is transferring into like the IEB community and the enterprise group is on fire right now. The entrepreneur group's on fire. The builders are getting there. Like there's some of the smaller companies. So they're trying to kind of wrap their, you know, minds around this and because some of these bigger companies are ready for this. And I mean, you know, a shift is, is an amazing opportunity, right? And I definitely want to get into that, but you know, for, for me, it's all about like, um, somebody that said this this morning on a call, they said, well, I've, I've been like really anxious, but I'm showing up for my people in that calm way. And I said, that's good. I like that. But I mean, what if you could truly find your confidence and then you don't have to fake it in front of your people. You can truly lead from a place of confidence. Like when you get to that point, now you know that you're really ready to, to lead and push forward. Yes. And I, I, I feel this divergence and I can see it online and I see certain people straying one way and just doing, taking the easy route. And I think I just wrote a blog post this morning and said, the easy and lazy thing to do is to talk about how bad things can get. We get, yeah. we get all that. We know things, things can go to zero. We get it. Yeah. That's easy to do. What's harder to do is to choose this other path and say, where, what can I do? What can I control? And where can I go? And I know you're like the master of this realm. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this kind of this fork in the road that everyone's kind of coming up to. Yeah. So um, I think the first thing here is that each person has to decide what this means for them. Right. So as, as human beings, we're always going to search for meaning. Uh, when something happens, like let's say X happens and that's the event that happens what we do is we, um, we assign meaning. We, we look for meaning, and then when we assign meaning, then we create a story about what's happening. And it's got nothing to do with the event. 
within our minds, all that matters is the story that we created. So what you're seeing when you talk about this divergence in the path, you're seeing that certain people are buying into a certain story right now, and then other people are buying into a different story. And it's not about who's right or wrong. It's about, you know, are you operating on, on the story that's going to serve you and your family and your business and your community and everything else at the highest level, right? Because the one story is easier to live. It's called being a victim, right? And that's exactly what you're talking about. A victim doesn't take any responsibility for what's happening around them. They place blame. And anytime that you place blame somewhere, what you're doing is you're giving away your personal power and your ability to influence the situation. So when I say, hey, this is bad and we can't do anything like this and things are shut down and people are freaking out and I can't get food and like all that kind of stuff, those, those are all valid reasons and yet they're still just reasons, right? Or I could say, you know what? In spite of all this, I can still do this and this and this and I can show up in this way and those are all reasons too. And again, like what I've learned is that it's not right or it's whatever you want in your life. If you want to buy into the hysteria right now and go crazy and play small and shut down and talk about what's bad, like good. But you just have to understand that there are people right now that are going to step in and take your market share, period, right? Because here's the thing, people, people look at a situation like this, 98% of the population are freaking out. There's another 2% of the population that they've been waiting for an event like this, right? Because here's the thing, I told our big companies this, right? Actually, I told all our companies this, and I'll, I'll, anybody in here, same thing. Your ability to influence the growth and significance of your company just massively increased, right? If we stayed on the same path of trajectory, you would have actually had a much smaller chance of building a bigger company, right? Because this event happens, because of the shift in the transfer of wealth, of market share, of everything that's gonna happen in the next three to four months, because of that, the companies that understand how to navigate this and move forward just massively increase their, their opportunities to build a bigger company and build a better company. So what we're going to see is that the, it's just a transfer. It's just like they say um, the wealthiest people actually get wealthier during downtimes, right? Because they, they're waiting for that transfer. So if you're, if you're positioned correctly right now, you're going to be in a position to actually receive the transfer, right? And then and we, we talk about guys like uh, Warren Buffett, right? He's been sitting on $150 billion worth of cash. Right? He's been pulling out of certain asset classes, investments for the last three years because he understood something like this is going to happen. Robert Kiyosaki, I heard him uh, speak last year, and he said, you better like, get out of the stock market right now and you know, start sitting on your cash. There's a black swan event coming in 2020. Right? Highly successful people have been waiting for a moment like this to happen. It, and it doesn't matter if it was triggered by Corona or it was triggered by some kind of other offset in the economy or the oil industry crashing, like whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the event is. It matters what happens after the event, which is a shift. And that's what we're dealing with here. We're just dealing with a shifting market, right? And that's the, 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 the mindset. You're either got a mindset of like, oh, what we're looking at right now is a shifting market and there's dynamics that play true to any shifting market. It doesn't matter what causes the shift. The dynamics stay true to the shift. And then we've got another set of people that all that they can see right now is the event and they don't understand that the event is just causing a shift. So if I'm looking at the event, I'm freaking out because I mean, people are thinking like we're, we're entering the apocalypse, the sky's falling, like none of that is actually happening. All that's happening is a virus is spreading, right? The government has chosen to be very proactive and practice social distancing. In some, in some cases, that's a little bit, you know, they're going to go extreme and say, hey, we're going to shut down a lot of stuff. But here's the truth is all that they're doing is, is aiming to slow down the spread of the virus, right? I don't know if you saw the Goldman Sachs, um, you know, article that got published, but they had an emergency call with their people Sunday night. And they said, look, 50% of Americans will probably still get the virus. What, what needs to happen is that 50% of America cannot have the virus within like 30 days, Right. If you spread it out over four months, then we're not going to overwhelm our, our hospitals and yep. you know, the medical care. And what we can do then is we can bring the number of casualties way down. Right. That's what we're experiencing right now. That's the event. So if people don't understand, like, that's what we're looking at. And it's just going to take a little bit longer and things are going to slow down and the market's going to contract a little bit. Like, that's what's happening. But people buy into like 98 percent of people buy into this, like this hysteria mindset of like, Oh, the government's trying to control us. They're trying to do this or, you know, and they get crazy with these kind of ideas. And what happens is um, 
the virus is spreading, but what's spreading way faster than the virus is like, uh, like th this mindset of fear and anxiety and hysteria, and that causes people to make bad decisions. Like that's the dangerous thing right now. But at the same time, if you understand what's happening and you can be proactive, this is going to be one of those like amazing opportunities, right? To one, you know, and, and even on a human level, right? There's going to be opportunities for you to learn and grow how to help other people on a business level. How can I influence my, my team and help them survive? How can our business navigate this? And then on a wealth level, like, hey, what am I going to invest in and how am I going to position my wealth to massively expand through this as well? So I think like that's what you're seeing on these two paths of, of divergence. Yeah, that, it, this, this is so good and we need this. Uh, and, and home inspectors need to be thinking about there's, there's going to be less competition now going forward you know the next three six whatever months however long this year lasts there's less competition for the exact thing that they're after so why not be part of that two percent right is that kind of the mindset is like be part of that two percent that capitalizes on this because yeah. there's not many people that are being aggressive or taking like massive action right now right no I mean, well there's not a lot but there are right our ieb companies are showing up more aggressive right now than they have in the past like year probably and I mean, we are, we've increased the level of communication. We're talking to them every day. We've added additional coaching calls, additional masterminds. Because the big thing is like we're prepping their minds and their emotions and then like helping them take the right kind of actions right now. So as they're doing that, they're, they're out there right now today taking market share from somebody that's climbing up and like trying to figure out what to do. Like they're losing, they're taking that right now. So I think, you know, for us, it's about like really helping people navigate, okay, what do we need to do here and how do we take action? But, um, and, and that's the exact same thing, like as, as long as this lasts, and again, I think initially people thought like, hey, this is gonna be over in like 20, 30 days, it's not, right? I mean, I think at the minimum, it's gonna be two months, right? More than likely, it's maybe gonna be three to six months before we really start getting kind of back to normalization, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a couple of key things that we have to understand. Number one is that uh, US home sales is one of the biggest stimulators of the US economy right? The government understands that and they do not want at all for home sales to zero out, right? There's right. If home sales started going in that direction. It's going to be like, that's when you got to worry. So the, the government understands that they will do whatever that they need to, to keep the, the pipeline flowing to where they can keep real estate transactions going because of how much money that interjects into um, the economy. I mean, just think of like one transaction, and how many people get paid on that transaction? Well, you, get a, you get a home inspector, you get a title company, you get a mortgage, you get a, a real estate agent and their brokerage and probably some contractors. And I mean, like, there's just a, a whole, and then moving services and after moving services, like there's like this whole chain of things that is a massive transaction. So the government's gonna make sure that even if somewhere it's locked up right now, they're gonna make sure that they unlock whatever they need to unlock to keep the transaction flowing. So we're not going from like 100% to zero. And that's, that's the really important thing to understand is that, yes, we're going to see a slowdown. I don't know what that slowdown is going to be. Maybe it's going to be a 15% contraction, 20, maybe a 50%. But here's the thing. If we even drop 50% in transaction volume for the next three, four months, if we get back to a big growth curve after that, if we look back at 2020, we're still going to have a strong growth year. Right? So even though, oh, we had this like really nasty hiccup in the middle of the year, like go, or beginning part of the year, Overall in the year, we're still going to have a really strong year. And that's where people can't like, I don't think they can connect with that right now because all they're seeing is they're in this place of fear and anxiety and all they can see is like right in front of them and it feels like they're lost in the forest. Like they don't have the clarity to navigate this. And I think for us, we're just trying to bring as much perspective and then just helping people navigate, hey, here's how you need to take, take advantage of all of this. Let's dig into that pent up demand theory because I think it's so valid because so interest rates come down or stay at historic lows, right? You have months maybe of people not buying, say the government throws in a, a tax credit or a home buying credit to stimulate that demand. What happens in three or four months if you've clammed up for, you know, for the three or four months, you don't have inspectors to take on the demand and demand spikes because it's pent up, right? So like that's the case that we're trying to talk about with anyone that's listening. If you just bunker up for months, what yeah. happens when that demand, that pent up demand unleashes and people keep start buying again? You're not going to be ready, right? You're not going to be ready and you're going to miss out on a huge opportunity, but that opportunity is going to be there and somebody's going to take advantage of it. So that's the thing that you got to understand is that if you don't take advantage of it, that's okay. And if that's a decision you make, 
that's fine. That may be the right thing for you. But just understand, somebody's coming in, they're going to take your market share. And once you lose market share, it's incredibly hard to go fight it back for it, right? So that's important to understand. Yeah, I don't even think the government's going to have to throw a tax credit in for buying. Like, I don't even think we're going to need that. We needed that back in 2007 and 8 because we got hit so hard over real estate for so long. But here's the thing that we're going to see is that, there, yes, there's going to be pent up demand because, dude, people are going to be in their houses, you know, for the next four, five, six weeks. Like, you know, when, when, when we start getting cleared for travel or maybe when they figure out a vaccine or whatever it is, like, we don't know, like people are going to want to go on their summer vacations. They're going to want to go on cruises and airlines. They're going to want to buy new houses. They, they're going to be ready. Right. So I think the other thing is that, um, the U S government is going to be injecting $4 trillion as a stimulus into the economy by the end of the year. To give you a little bit of perspective, that's almost twice as much as they injected over a six year period after the crash in 2007 and eight, right? Wow. We are talking about more money than has ever been imagined funneling into the economy in the shortest amount of time. So that's going to create incredible opportunities, right? We're going to see, I believe we're going to see a really big boom going into the end of the year. So what, what that looks like is, and, and yeah, I'll come to, let's, let's whiteboard it out. Yeah, let's, uh, let's kind of get on here because this is, I think, where we can maybe really help uh, just people understand kind of like some of the stuff we're dealing with here, right? So yeah. um, if we're looking at a growth trend, and let's say we're going on this growth trend, now we have this event and then we go back up, right? So a couple of things that are happening here. Um, this is just a shift curve. Like shifts happen for a lot of different reasons, right? So yeah. it, it doesn't matter what causes the shift, the shift curve and what happens in the shift is really important. This is something that, you know, Gary Keller with Keller Williams has done such an amazing job. And if you look at Keller Williams' growth curve, they really took off growing during the last recession. So when Coldwell Banker and um, all of these other big companies, right, that were out there that were kind of, you know, leading the charge, right? Or your Remax and stuff like that. When, when they didn't know how to handle this, Keller Williams went and just grabbed their market share. And Keller Williams was third going into that shift. And then by 2013, the time shifts open, they were number one. So, you know, this, again, this is a shift line and it applies to any shift. It doesn't matter what causes the shift, right? So obviously we know that we're not in this stage anymore. That's our growth stage. Um, we're probably like, this is our flattening stage. We're in our flattening stage. We're going into the third stage, which is the decline. And now it's going to be seeing, okay, when do we actually get to the fourth stage, which is the bottom? So if we look at this time period here, right, this is where we're saying maybe three to six months, uh -huh. right? It's not going to be as short lived as some people think. It's not going to be the people that are kind of like, Hey, I'll just write this out. They, they don't have an idea how, how long this is going to be. Right. They, they can maybe write it out for two or three weeks, but when it starts being like three months, they're going to realize, yep. <clears throat> say, I made the wrong decision. I screwed up. And by that time, somebody else has already taken their market share. Right. So here's what happens. We start going down. And one of the best things you can do is really watch your cash position on the way down. But here's what we're telling our companies is don't fire anybody. Hold on to your people because exactly what you said a while ago, Kevin, what happens when we start going up? And I mean, this is kind of an illustration. Our growth line here, I believe, is going to be steeper than it was here, right? Which means that we're going to see a really big boom happening here. But what happens is if you're not positioned early enough to take advantage of that boom, a lot of people, they're going to wait for the, the real evidence to show up that we're back up and running. And right. here's where they're going to deploy their time and effort, energy and money when they should have been doing it like right around this area, right? Right when the, when the, when the cycle starts to turn. So... What we're doing right now is we're just really coaching our companies through, okay, how do you navigate this? What do you need to be focusing on? But that's what we're going to be seeing. So if, if you're laying off people right now, if you are clamming up, if you're not out there talking to your agents, right? What, and, and people are like, well, what's the point? I can't go drop candy bowls by an office. Well, you know, our perspective is you should have, you know, don't do that anyway. Like have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, an agent and get to know them and see how you can add value to them. You can still do that today. Right. We've got companies that now have four or five people on the lines and they're just calling all the agents like, Hey, how are you? What's going on? You know, how are you doing? Because right now it's not about like trying to get their business right now. It's right. just about human to human saying like, Hey, are you okay right now? How's your family doing? Is there anything that I can help you with? 
right? And whether you're calling people that you've already been doing business with or like calling somebody new, like if I were to call you right now and you're, you're a top producing agent and I just say, Hey Kevin, I just want to give you a call, man. Um, listen, things are crazy out there. Like, how are you doing? Like you've got a big business, you've got people on your team. You know, what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of prepare for this, the shift? You know, what, what's your, what's your plan of action? Hey, I just want to encourage you because we're actually in this together, right? If you're not doing transactions, we're not doing transactions, but here's the thing. I just want to call and, uh, you know, I figured maybe if things are a little bit slower, I can just get to know you. And I just want to give you a word of encouragement that, you know, we're going to get through this together and we're here to help you and serve you. Right. The conversation like that is valuable because the, their other inspector, maybe the realtors calling the inspector right now and they're like, Oh, we're shutting stuff down. We're, you know, like this is a bad situation and all that kind of stuff. They're going to start switching now. Right. So they're going to start the, the market share race happens here. Right. It, it happens on the way down. That's where you take the market share because by the time that the, 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 it turns back around, a lot of other people are like, oh, I'll start building my business back over here. You're going to be too late. Somebody else would have gotten ahead of you so far. Right. So, you know, this is kind of where we are and we're talking about everything that's involved in that. Right. So the other thing that I want to share with you, uh, and this is why this is such an important conversation. Um, let me get the whiteboard a little bit closer so you can kind of see yeah. this. So this is the market share, right? And let's say today this pie is like your actual market share. So the pie represents the, um, the market out there. Mm -hmm. so let me, I'm going to turn this light a little bit. So I think you can see the yep. blue. Button. Okay. Whoa. All right. So let me make this a little bit bigger, right? Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So here's your market share. And what's been happening is the market's been growing, right? So the market's growing out here, and when the market's expanding, even with the same market share, your business is growing. So if you look at that graph, like think about kind of like a flute glass, right? Mm -hmm. So that you may be drinking like some champagne out of or something like that. You can take several sips and it drops down a little bit, but then once it's here, you take one sip, it drops all the way down to the bottom. And the theory behind this is that your, your, ex, your, your, your expansion line is always the, the edge of the market. So when the market's expanding, you can actually take on a lot of business here. But the same thing, when the market contracts, it's going to take the heaviest hit out on the edge. So what's happening right now is we're going to start seeing these leading edges start kind of disappearing because the market's um, minimizing, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that the, the hit's going to feel kind of heavy out there on the leading edge. But here's what happens. And here's what we're telling is like, look, the game right now is not to try to grow out here because that doesn't exist. The game right now is you got to grow this way. Right? It's a market share grab right now. So as a company's out there, what's happening is they can immediately go out there and increase their market share. And then as the market comes back, now look at how much more market share you have versus if you were still just on the, on the same path, right? Like yes. why um, wealthy people love events like this. Like, because it gives them an opportunity to massively increase their, their position um, out in the marketplace. So that's essentially what we're looking for. I love the visual representation of that. And inspectors need to know, like you just said, people are calling your agents right now. Like people are taking this market share. I know IEB companies are hungry for this. Yeah. So take this as a call to action to say, and it's not something I believe everybody can just flip a switch and do. It does take mental training and coaching and, and yeah. consistency. And so, if for anybody, if this is even just a call to action to start having these conversations or start seeking out mentorship or people that are of the same mindset, do it today. Because like you said, time is, a, time is of the essence that's happening right now, today. People are having Zooms. They're doing coffee meetings with agents every morning. They're calling them. And if you're not, guess what? You're, 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 like you said, that's, that's contracting. That's exactly right, man. I mean, you know, and that thing is that these things are happening real time right now. And if you're sitting back, because here's the thing that happens in a shifting market, most people go to, uh, there's kind of a, a couple things. You, you, natural human instinct is fight, flight, or freeze, right? And most people are going to go into a freeze mode where they, they don't know what to do. And then they're only going to hang out there for so long and then they're going to start contracting, right? And that's kind of the flight mode. And, and that's kind of what you're talking about. Like the easy thing to do is just talk about what's wrong and hunker down and well, we just, you know, so, but while people are doing that, there are those people that, I mean, they're, they're like going to battle every day now. And, and yep. here's the whole thing about it is that 
we told our companies, look, you're going to have to work way harder than you had before for probably less money over the next couple of months. That doesn't feel good. That does not feel like I'm winning. It feels like I'm getting my ass kicked out there. But here's the, the thing. As soon as that curve turns back around, now you're going to start getting massive paydays, right? All of a sudden now is where you're getting really big influxes of growth within your company. And I mean, that's where, you know, if, if you're not doing the right activities now, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that. I love setting those expectations too, because it's not going to be easy. If it were easy, we'd all do it. Every company would be great and, and right off into the sunset. Like, yeah. And we haven't even seen the fallout of this, right? We like, right. people are like, Oh, the real estate market hasn't taken that hit. We're like, man, just wait another two or three or four weeks and you're going to start seeing that hit show up. So we know it's coming, uh, but we know it's not going to go to zero also. Right. right. So, because the easiest thing, if, if, if my mark, if the market starts contracting, let's just say the market contracts by 25% in the next 60 days, right? That's going to cause a really heavy hit because a lot of people also, their mentality and their budgets are set up for them being up, you know, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60% over last year. So now when you take that away and you actually go down, that could be really a hard hit. But the thing about it is if I can actively get out right now and grab up market share from other people, I can maybe even maintain about the same or maybe a little bit less of a growth line. Um, whereas other people are just getting like slaughtered. Right. And I mean, that's the thing that happens is the reason that there's a transfer of wealth is because so many people get just completely bloodied up in situations like this because they're running around frantically and they don't know what to do. And then there's other people that are operating with confidence right now, operating with speed and accuracy and they're grabbing market share. Gosh, so good. So what, what, what do you say to someone right now that is watching this and they're feeling the things we've discussed um, after they, you know, close this window out and turn to the rest of their day? Are there simple little things they can do to kind of jumpstart that momentum? Because I know the average everyday inspector, I'm reading in the Facebook groups, yeah, they're not going to immediately turn into the mindset of these enterprise IEB members, but it's like, how do we, what are those first couple steps to at least get them thinking in the right direction? Yeah, number one is you have to make sure that you're watching who you're being influenced by right now. Because I mean, like uh, somebody, I'm not on any of the inspector groups uh, on the internet. Uh, and, and, you know, that's just my decision because I don't feel like the level of conversation there is conducive to like really moving things forward, right? That's my view. Um, my partner, Greg, he's on those kind of groups and stuff like that. But, you know, it's kind of like, you know, somebody in one of these groups yesterday was just kind of, and I think like they were like a, a moderator of one of these groups and they were kind of making it sound like the sky's falling. And there, there was an IEB member in there that says, just hang on guys. Like this may not be as bad as you guys are initially thinking it's going to be right. Like let's hang in there and be, and then he just got blasted from like a, a lot, another other people. So number one is you got to look at what kind of conversation are you in right now? Are you in the kind of conversations that are bringing, even though that we know that things are going to get harder, we're going to take a hit. Are you in the kind of conversations that are like bringing you kind of peace and calmness about like, Hey, how do we move forward and how do we make great decisions? Or are you in the kind of, uh, conversations that are stirring anxiety within you and like causing you to like just feel uncertain and like what should I do I should just shut everything down and you know go buy guns and ammo and like you know all that kind of stuff and I'm not saying like don't be prepared right the most successful people I know are probably more prepared than like anybody else like they could probably live six months without any kind of contact to anybody else and be just 100% fine right so it's not about not being prepared it's about are you making the decisions right now that are going to help you get through this so number one is you got to pay attention to what am I reading? Who am I talking to? What's being like influencing me? If you're finding that you're in an environment that's like just causing hysteria and panic and, you know, fear, get out of that environment and get into an environment where people are having like rational conversations about what's happening and how to navigate it. That's number one. You've got to focus on that. Number two is um, actively, I would say, just focus on your mindset and your emotional state and just have awareness around how are you feeling. Um, it's okay if you're feeling anxious or scared or worried, like those are normal things, but you know, still, um, exercise, right. Eat clean, right. Pray, meditate. Like, I mean, get your mind and emotion and spirit right so that you can be there for others. Right. Cause I mean, the, the big thing too is it's not just you, like everybody's going through this. So your family needs you right now, probably more than ever. Um, if you've got, uh, you know, a team of people, if you've got a business with other people working in it immediately, like have straightforward conversations with them that, that's based in like, you know, rationality and based in what's happening, but give them the confidence that you are going to move forward and learn how to navigate this and that they're important to you and you're going to do whatever you can to make sure that they're okay through this. 
and tell them like, hey, three, four, five months from now, like we're gonna, we're gonna be back on a different path and it's gonna be an amazing upward trajectory and we're excited about that, but we're gonna have to do the hard work now. And like that's one of the things we modeled last night was that we had all six of our enterprise companies like presenting on the call, hey, here's the exact conversation we're gonna have with our people, how we're going to lay it out, right? But that conversation has to happen because here's what happens with companies that don't have that conversation is they're gonna get the crap kicked out of them anyway, and then they're not gonna have the confidence, and then their people are gonna be like, what are we doing about this? And they're gonna say, I don't know, and then people are going to leave. And then when that curve starts turning back around, they don't have the, their people don't have the confidence of like, hey, now's the time that we gotta engage. So it's, it's as important to build confidence on the way down, because when it's time to turn up, if you, if you wanna get the biggest gains, you have to have the, the best speed and movement of confidence out of the gate, right? It's like accelerating out of a corner in a car, right? Like you can't wait till you're all the way out and then punch it. You gotta carry that momentum and accelerate out of the corner. And that's what these companies are doing is they're building the confidence that people are gonna say, all right, we're with you. We can't see all the way around this corner, but we are with you. Let's hit the accelerator and then go. Where other companies, their people are gonna say, I don't know about that, like this doesn't feel right. And they're gonna get all the way out of the corner until they can see the complete straightaway. And by the time they do that, the car is, the other car, is so far ahead of them, there's no way they're gonna catch them, right? So have the conversations with your key people. That's gonna be really important. Keep your personal energy up and then you've gotta like start reading and educating yourself about how to navigate a business in a shifting market, right? It's a different ball game. We're not playing the same ball game we are right now that we played two, even two weeks ago. Different ball game right now, different set of rules. So you gotta learn what to do now. Love this and it's holistic and like it, and it gets down to, hey, Make sure you're getting enough sleep at night. Make sure you're limiting your exposure to, like you said, social media, negative sources of energy. And like, like I'm working from home and I'm trying to practice when I'm preaching to all of our users. I get up, I'm doing my hair, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm eating a good breakfast like I'm going to work because I come into this office like I'm getting down to it and taking action yep. and going to work. You can't treat it as paid vacation or unpaid vacation, however you want to think of it. But yeah, I, I want to pick back up or even we can take the conversation in a different direction. Um, I just wanted to make sure we gave a couple of those uh, mindset kind of approach based shifts that inspectors can and should be taking if they want to come out of this um, you know, hole in the other end. Yeah. So I think um, here, here's one of the big things to, to just really understand is that um, th we're just looking at an event that's taking, taking place and unfolding right now. Right. So, and, and that's caused by a, a really bad circumstance. So nobody wants to see this virus spreading. Nobody wants to see additional people dying or being sick, right? But it's just an event that's unfolding. And anytime something like that happens, there's always amazing opportunities that, that become available. And um, for me, this like takes me back to a very different circumstance, but still caused like a, a local ship, right? In 2017, we had Hurricane Harvey that hit Houston, and I don't know if you remember, but there was just massive flooding, right? Yeah. Again, really bad circumstance happens, but we see it, the shift in the market, same thing happened. And, but in that time, there was like this really cool opportunity for humans to just kind of slow down a little bit and, and really focus on connecting with humans. And where the cool thing about that is obviously we didn't have to worry about like humans really being together. So what, what was able to happen is after that happened, like, you know, families were hosting, like the people that didn't get flooded, they would host a, you know, just like a impromptu kind of meal where, you know, volunteers and families had lost their homes and you would have like 30, 40 people at a house. And this was happening all over the place, you know, just get together and fellowship together and reconnect and man, how have you been, you know? And, and an opportunity for, for people to help others as well, right? So there's, those opportunities are gonna be available now to help other people, right? I mean, find out who your neighbor is that, you know, is an elderly person or who the, who the friend that you have is that has respiratory issues or, you know, a, a compromised immune system or whatever it is and like, how can I serve you, right? Because you may not be able to get out right now, but you know, I can still run by the grocery store, go buy some, like, so those kind of opportunities create such amazing energy, right? Because in those moments, you're truly in a place of just practicing gratitude and servanthood. And that opens up abundance in your life, right? I mean, Tony Robbins talks about this is like the times where he's given the most, where he had the, the least is where he found abundance. It wasn't the times where he had multiple millions of dollars and all these, like 
you find your abundance in that moment where you say, I choose to act as if I had more than what the present situation is allowing me to see. In that moment is where you find true abundance. And I think like that's the gift here is to say, how can we find that abundance? Because the world is telling you right now that everything is, there's not enough of everything. You're not going to be okay. You're going to lose. It's going to, you know, the world is, is, is got this like message of like scarcity and fear that's like jamming down your throat right now. And I think one of the best ways that you can overcome that is by just acts of service, like figuring out small things, like how you can help people. Because in those little moments, you find true significance, you find abundance, you find connection, and then use that to carry that gratitude forward into your business, into your focus of like, you know what, I'm willing to work harder than anybody else today because I want to make sure that I can serve my company, that I can keep you know, business flowing for my people. I'm going to work harder than anybody today because I want to be the person out there that can serve the real estate agents out there because they're also freaking out, right? And, you know, the thing about a real estate agent is like sometimes you can go two or three months without a paycheck. Now you get, may get a bigger paycheck, but one of those agents, like they may have just like their paycheck was about to hit and then that thing got canceled. And now they don't even know when their next paycheck is going to be. At least a lot of these inspectors are still out there getting paid, even though it's maybe going to be slowing down, right? So, Right. I'm going to work harder than anybody else who can have great conversations and have energy for that agent and say, hey, how can I help you? You know, they may say, you know, you may call an agent just to check in on how they're doing when nobody else has done that for them. Nobody else. And in that moment, they're just maybe just break down and say like, oh my gosh, like I can't even buy groceries right now because like this closing is supposed to happen this weekend. Like I really need that money just to get me by for the next month to say, hey, like, what do you need? Like, I would love to just serve you in this moment. And like, what if it costs you 200 bucks to run to the store and like buy some groceries and, and give it to that agent? Do you know what, what kind of a relationship you just cemented forever moving forward? So I think like those are the kind of things that people need to find the gifts in and say, slow down, like see how you can help people. And then like have that, that charge to where you're going to battle every day right now. Right. Where, I mean, my level of like intensity has massively increased since the first of the week. Right. Um, I'm hyper-focused, I'm not wasting any time. Even if I've got five minutes available right now, I'm making sure that I have a great conversation with somebody to encourage them, or I'm calling somebody, or I'm thinking about, okay, how do we navigate, what, you know, how can we add value? Like for me, it's just like, it's about value injection right now at the highest level, and that's the big pivot, right? Because I mean, that's what people need right now. They need value injection because everything about them feels like value is being taken away from them, right? They feel like they're being stripped away and like it's not a good feeling. So it's, it's a different way of, of functioning, but I would invite people into thinking that way, right? And saying like, let me start there um, because that just stems something really cool. And, and that is like from the personal side, what adds to you being sharper on the business side, the investment side, whatever the, the other things that you're approaching are. Yes. And I invite everyone to get outside of your comfort zone and challenge yourself and think about how, think about something that you didn't think you could do. You, yeah, maybe you're not good on video. Maybe you're not great at, at doing email and newsletters. Try it. Like I, mm -hmm. I wasn't good at video. I still don't think I'm great at video, but we're doing it. We're putting yes, something we're out there. <laughs> we're doing it and we're taking action. And so I want, I want to challenge everybody to say, don't clam up, have a conversation with one person, even start small. Like you have to yeah. get momentum with these things. And I think, there's always an agent out there that you can connect with and that will appreciate it. And that will definitely have a coffee zoom meeting with you. And then guess what? You just created content while making someone feel better, um, comforted, supported, um, but just take action, do something. <laughs> do something. And I mean, here's, here's the thing too, that we, you know, we talked about with a lot of our larger companies is that, um, Hey, in the next couple of weeks, if things start slowing down, what an amazing time to like, you know, sharpen your sword, right? If, if you know that there's going to be a huge opportunity, work on your systems, work on your models, like work on your email automations, right? Work on whatever you need to work on. Get, you know, one company, I think it was Greg and them, they got one guy uh, that's grown certified out of their like 24 inspectors. And he said, hey, if we have a slow day or like, you know, I'll, I'll meet with some of the guys and get them drone certified. So maybe by the time this is over, they can have 24 guys drone certified versus one, right? So those are the kind of opportunities that you got to be looking at. If you have time that slows down, use it to work on your business. What a great opportunity to say, Hey, I'm going to spend more time with my family, work on my business and have great conversations with agents. I mean, like, you know, what's wrong with that? That actually sounds pretty cool. Right? So yeah. and then what happens is that turns around and now you're boom. Now you're getting your bigger paychecks. Right. But it doesn't feel good. Like 
I don't like the thought of having to like dig into my money that I've been putting aside for like investing or saving. Like I, I don't like the thought of that at all. And you know, if I've got to do that for, for three or four months to get back to the point where my business is then going to explode in growth, like I'm 100% willing to do that. Right. So, um, it, it's a give and take. You got to see the bigger picture. A lot of people either think like, Oh, when times are good, they're good. And when times are bad, they're bad. It's like, no, it's like a fluid line. You got to learn how to kind of see the good and the bad and navigate it and how you're moving forward through it. And I love that you show that vulnerability because yeah, for everyone that's watching, it's not like Dirk or myself have great lives that are unimpacted by these things. I think we're all seeing hits. We're all taking hits, but like you said, collectively we're coming together and having a shared mindset to approach this with action and choosing to find kind of the way we can expand throughout this. So for this, even the single inspectors, expand your service offerings. Like choose to expand during this time um, because like you said, you come out of it stronger. Absolutely. And I mean, like the thing about it is, and this is the part that I don't think a lot of people like to hear, but I mean, I'm telling our, our, our clients, I'm telling all the IEB people, I said, be scrappy and figure out what you can do, you know, figure out like what are those other services. And I think that there's, we're going to find the opportunities, right? So, Right now, we're just in the initial kind of like, almost kind of like the shock and awe phase of like what's happening. Like, you know, it's kind of like this, this bomb went off and like everybody's like living in the percussion trying to figure out what's, what's going on. So, um, but the real fallout hasn't even happened yet, right? So I think like that's where people are freaking out right now, but we haven't even seen the fallout yet. So we know that things are going to slow down. We do know that like, you know, the tertiary like markets have been like massively hit, right? I mean, if you're looking at people that, you know, have a little gym or a restaurant or a bar or the Uber drivers or the people with their Airbnbs, like all of those things have been hit. The travel industry has been hit, right? So that's going to have a fallout on these people. Like, you know, and, and there's places like California, I think um, the mayor of LA went on TV and said, hey, if you can't pay your rent right now, that's fine. Like, don't, you know, well, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, that sounds like a great thing. What about if you're the guy that owns the building that's renting to, you know, 30, 40, 50 families? What right. does that mean to you? Like, you're about to take a massive hit, right? So, again, like, there's this trickle effect that's going to happen, and then that's going to have a, a longer-lasting impact, right? So, um, if you understand the economy at kind of on a bigger scale, then you, you kind of understand that it's like this really big machine, and everybody has, like, tiny little cogs in the big machine, right? So... Um, right now, like there's a lot of things going on in the machine that's kind of, you know, going to, you know, cause it to kind of, you know, contract a little bit, not work as well. But at the same time, there's massive stimulus that's coming into the machine that, you know, I'm not sure how fast the stimulus is going to start coming in. But once it starts coming in, it's going to last for six or eight months. And again, the government wants the, the real estate transactions to do well. They understand that that's one of the vital parts of like our economy thriving is our real estate industry. So. Um, there's going to be a lot of focus on making sure that that runs right now. It's just like, Hey, can you, can you kind of see the bigger picture and not just get so involved in your own life and your own business and like your, the impact that, that you're going to feel because the moment that you're in that place, it feels ex exceptionally rough. It feels like you're just getting, but when you look at it and say like, Oh, like, you know, at least I can still go out and do an inspection today where, you know, that waitress, I mean, she's probably living week to week on tips and she's not getting any tips this week. Or yeah. what about that guy that, you know, has the restaurant, right? I mean, he hasn't had a single customer because the governor told him to shut his restaurant down, right? I mean, nobody has told anybody to shut their inspection businesses down, right? I mean, right. I think people with right precautionary measures can still go do business today. And I think like that's where, you know, we're seeing that a lot of the IEB companies have immediately pivoted in like how they're doing things and even offering to do like virtual uh, you know, reports and walkthroughs over Zoom after the inspection so that the buyers and the realtor don't have to come together at the property. So, I mean, there's like a lot of different ways that we can navigate these things, but you have to just have the bigger perspective of it. Gosh, yeah. And even just a simple shift like that of offering that service shows you're aware, shows you're a business that's willing to pivot and, uh, and cope with these times. And that speaks volumes about the type of company and business you are rather than just radio silence and nothing. I think that people don't realize the impact of going away, clamming up, what that says about your business when you pick your head back up in six months. Um, so I encourage everybody, and I talk to inspectors every day that say, Kevin, I'm too busy to do these things. I'm so slammed. Well, now and in the future, you might not be. So this is kind of the universe calling your bluff and saying like, well, are you going to work on those things you said you were too busy to work on months ago? Like, what about now? Um, <laughs> But it takes, like you said, it takes a clear head. And that's what you're so, that's what you're so great at is talking through 
how to kind of declutter and get your mind in a good place so you can actually focus on this stuff because you're right it's you turn on the news or social media it's hard to block out but um but yeah that's the challenge we're trying to help everyone with absolutely man um anything else you think that would be helpful for for your listeners and maybe what what we can talk about to help them you know it's it, i want to my mind naturally is going towards um you know, like you said, getting out of your own mind and, and stopping that pressure from pushing down on you, because I think we all have bank accounts that we check into. We all have family members that are, are impacted or will be impacted by this. So I, I definitely, we're not here to minimize or discount the impact of that. It's really, I, I can't stress the importance enough to review not making this worse by putting that pressure that just keeps pushing you down day after day. You've got to like sidestep it you got to push that off of you and i think our minds are our biggest enemies in these times and so um share with i mean you're you're so vigilant and diligent with these things are can you share with people maybe some some things you're even doing to start your day or kind of these mental focus and, and clarity things do you, you mentioned like you're taking every minute of the day to reach out to, to like play offense or to put value into the world um what would you tell an inspector of, of how to to think about that or even do that yeah i think one is um just start by setting the intention right and you know i don't, I don't know when somebody's going to be seeing this but i mean the, the thing about it is like as soon as you see something like this the best way to move forward is to immediately take action based on the new intention so if you if you're watching this and you say you know what i am going to be proactive i am going to get my mind right i i do want to take some some steps in the right direction start immediately maybe the first thing you do after this is just call somebody and just make the phone call all about them and not have any expectation that you're going to talk about you. And if they ask you how you're doing, you know, be honest, maybe say like, Hey, I'm nervous, but you know what? I'm really committed to walking this thing through and helping other people. Right. If you have that phone call immediately, you're going to have enough energy for the next conversation and enough energy for the next conversation. Right. Um, but here's the thing, like when you're clamming up, then that's where the value stops, right? And, and, I, and I talk about this example because this is one of the, the, the most like profound um, examples of this in the world, right? So if you, if you kind of go to like, uh, like Israel and Jordan and like those, those regions, you have the Jordan River that flows, you know, in that region. And the Jordan River flows through the Sea of Galilee and then flows right back out of, out of the Sea of Galilee, right? So it flows in and then flows out. And because of that, that through flow of fresh water, the Sea of Galilee is like one of the most abundant bodies of water on the planet, right? But the exact same water keeps flowing down into the Dead Sea, right? And the Dead Sea has no outlet. And that water is so incredibly salty because there's no outlet for the water that nothing can live there. So here's what happens is if, if you're taking in all this information, you're just clamming down and going small, you're not wanting to like let anything flow through you, then you're like the Dead Sea, like there's no fertile ground within you, right? So um, the moment that you say like, hey, I'm just going to, I got some maybe encouragement from watching this and I'm just going to have one conversation with somebody else and just encourage them and let them know like, hey, this is like the media is making this sound really bad, like it's apocalyptic. It's not actually that, it's just an event that's playing out and like, let me just share with you some thoughts I have around like how, why I, I believe we're going to be okay. It's still going to be kind of tough or we may, you know, go through a little bit of a hard financial time, but here's where bigger opportunities on the back end. I just want to encourage you in this. The moment you do that, you just open like this little stream to flow through you. Right. And you just became a little bit more abundant and you do it again and again and again and again. And whether you do it like on a Facebook live or just sending an email or just calling a real estate agent or, you know, like I'm sure the title people are freaking out. I'm sure the mortgage people are freaking out. Like everybody's freaking out in the same way, but can you be that one person who just calls like your, your favorite, favorite title rep and just, you know, you know, somebody that you know, cause you should have great relationships with them anyway. You should have great relationships with the mortgage people. Like call them and just say, Hey guys, like, how are you doing right now? Right. Are you guys good? Are you guys uh, okay? Um, hey, we're in this together. Right. I just want to give you encouragement that you know, we're in the same boat. You guys, if you guys aren't closing deals, we're, you know, actually you guys can still be closing deals and they don't. Right. So yeah. they only pay if the deal closes. Like most of the home inspectors, you're getting paid when you do your work. So, um, you know, everybody's in this together. So can you just kind of step out there? I mean, like, I think like that's one of the big things that I'm just constantly aware of because 
I understand that there's not much that I can do. If I start clamming down, now here's the thing, like I could fire all my people and I can shut my business down and I've got enough money that if I margin my life down, like I'll be okay for maybe a couple of years, like that I don't have to work or anything like that. So I know that I can go into self-preservation -preser mode and hunker down and like I'll be okay. But here's the thing, like that's not what I want. I wanna build a really significant business. I wanna impact a lot of people and the only way that I can do that is not by self-preservation, it's by expanding everything and just being a, a river that flows through. So if I get good information, if I get encouraged, I immediately wanna pass that on to as many people because then I'm opening myself up to get more of the good stuff, right? So I just wanna be like a vessel, like a flow through. And I, I would just invite people to start thinking in that way. Um, and then as far as morning routine goes, like I'm a really big fan of like, um, you know, a really good morning routine, like the, the Miracle Morning by Hal Alrod, if you've never read that book, you know, and there's, there's just like simple things you can do. So, I mean, I, I love to get, uh, you know, some kind of a workout in the morning. I'm not like a big, like hour long gym guy, like using my workouts are like 10, 15 minutes. They're very short lived. I just make sure I get a sweat, get my heart rate up, you know, get my body moving. Um, uh, I enjoy kind of just some quiet time, some reading and meditation um you know getting into a journal things like that but just kind of like clearing myself and like making sure my mind is right for the day um and right now man like i one of the biggest things that i'm doing not to get into like all kind of funkiness is like i'm staying off of facebook right i'm, I'm not you know I'm, I'm actually like completely like you know where usually i wouldn't put out as much content i'd actually just consume more content i've just completely flipped that and say like i'm just gonna put content out answer questions around the content I'm putting out, but I'm not actually going to go out there and just like massively like scroll and stuff. Cause I know if, if for the next hour I scrolled Facebook, I would be anxious after that. Yes. Right. Yes. But now you and I are having a conversation. I feel great about this conversation. I feel great about talking to you now, by the time I'm done with this conversation, I'm going to have enough energy for the next conversation I'm going to have. Right. Yeah. So I think like just watching where your energy is and, and what that looks like, like, Man, that's important, and, and that's a day in, day out ball game. Yes, I, I, and I, I challenge everybody, and I try. I just tried doing this two nights ago because I watched a YouTube video that that really illustrated and articulated how when you pick up your phone as soon as you wake up, you're training your brain to be reactive all day and react yep. to information that comes in, and be anxious. Whereas when you wake up, if you just sip your coffee with a clear head and look out at an open field or the mountains or whatever's outside your house and think about set your intention for the day and your goals you're already winning like you're starting your day off with a win um and so i just encourage everybody like yeah you you probably know what the news is going to be you probably know that things are going to be a little bit better a little bit worse someone's going to make some bold proclamation about what's going to happen you, you get all that work on yourself and like and wake up and don't start the day reactive that's one simple thing we all can do and that has an impact on each other so um, huge, impact, man. huge impact yeah this is great this is the best video we've ever made i'm gonna i'm gonna put this up today for sure um, awesome thank you i love that yeah any closing comments that you just want to put out there obviously hundreds and i hope thousands of home inspectors will, will watch this um you know maybe home buyers and agents alike i think i want i want to be able to speak i want you to be able to speak to everybody um kind of with a closing kind of thought yeah i think here's the thing guys like um if you can get out of the moment right now and lift up a little bit and just kind of see the bigger picture, it takes a lot of the anxiety away. Cause I mean, we're not going to be in a position where our supply chains are going to start failing us. Right. I mean, the reason there was no groceries, you know, on the shelves over the weekend is because everybody went and bought everything for like multiple weeks where they usually buy like a half a week worth of stuff. Right. Right. And if you guys like, I don't know if you guys get this in Denver, like where you guys are, but, in Houston, if there's a chance that we're going to get like one inch of snow, like all the water and bread's gone off the shelves, right? <laughs> so in small events, we already see that kind of stuff happening, right? So people are so nervous and like, here's the thing, like we're not in the kind of situation where our supply lines are going to like go away. Like you're going to be able to go to the grocery store and buy groceries, right? You may not be able to go in the restaurant, but the restaurant will probably deliver to your house if you choose that. Those guys are also looking how to pivot. Like how can they keep serving you, right? So, um, we, we know that we're going to have, uh, you know, food, a uh, shelter, stuff like that. So this is not as severe of an event as like what people are making it out to be. Like the big thing is just like the whole thing with like keeping humans apart is just slowing down the rate. So when you understand that and, and you say like, look, 
while this event's going on, how am I going to make sure that I'm showing up in a big way for myself, meaning that you're pouring into yourself, you're watching your, your mindset, your emotions, but then immediately like switch gears and say like, hey, how can I help somebody else? And start with your family. They're going to need you. Be there for your family. Uh, be there for your neighbor. Like make sure your neighbors are okay. Like when's the last time that you maybe just, you know, went and knocked on your neighbor's door and just said, you know, go ahead and step back. Just say, hey, are you guys okay? Right? Are, are you guys doing okay? Do you need anything? Right? I'm going to be running to the store later. Like, can I get you something? Right? I mean, just, is your neighbor okay? Are your friends okay? You know, if you have a business, like have the conversation with your people right off the bat. And then every day, just realize that we're all going through an event right now, but people are going to be different, living different realities in this event. Some people will live like an apocalyptic event and then they're going to show, they're going to, they're going to wake up one day and they're going to realize like, oh, life's back to normal, but I burned through all of my resources and my money and my relationships, all this kind of stuff. When other people are like just gangbusters and like they've just experienced incredible abundance, you have to choose which version of that story you're going to live by. But it's, it, it'll become like a self-prophecy based on the information that you're taking in. So if all day long you're taking in negative information and every person you're talking about is, is just like just instilling fear into you, like you're going to experience that version of reality, right? So find people that can pour into you, that can, that can have that positivity that recognize like, look, this sucks for everybody, man. Like, I mean, tomorrow I'm supposed to have 26 companies, you know, in this room that I'm supposed to be training live. And now tomorrow I'm having to do it virtually, right? And one of my favorite things is to get together with other human beings and train at a high level. Like that is like the thing that I love, right? So, you know, but still, we're making the best of it. And we're saying, hey, we're going to do it over Zoom and still get these companies trained up, you know. And, you know, we've already had people that, like, cancel on certain trainings and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, our cash flow is also going to get hit just like everybody else's. But the thing about it is that, you know, in spite of all that, I'm not going to clam up, right? The best chance for my cash flow to increase is for me to increase value in, in what I put out. So, that's what I'm focusing on right now. And maybe I'm putting out massive value, but it's not going to really show up in the next, like, three or four months as far as the cash goes. But, you know, six months from now, the cash should be like way more because I, I focus on putting out so much value. And that's what I'm choosing to focus on. And I think like, that's what I would just invite people to say is like, on a daily basis, are you fighting for self-preservation or are you expanding value into uh, the universe, right? And just starting with like your family, your neighbors, your friends, your, your people, the realtors. I mean, you know, there, there's so many people that you can help. So where are you looking at each day? Are you going out and delivering that value or are you just, just climbing up and, and staying in fear? I love it. And what's the downside to doing it? What do you like? What are you going to lose? A couple of months from now, you put out a bunch of helpful, amazing content. And you've touched hundreds of people. That's not a bad place to be regardless of where we're at. <laughs> no, it's, it's a beautiful place to be, man. And like, and, and the thing that I would say is like, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, it, I don't put out a lot of content, right? Cause usually I am so involved with so many people like on an ongoing basis and live trainings and all this kind of stuff that I'm constantly putting out value, but it's usually not like on a Facebook live. I did a Facebook live um, yesterday for the first time in a long time. I was nervous as hell, man. Like, I was <laughs> right. And I did this kind of stuff all the time, but to do a Facebook live, like I was like sweating. I was like, you know, and then I did another one today and today was way easier. Right. But it's just like, yeah. If, you, if you're wondering, like, how do I do that, just set up a camera and practice. Like, set up a light, you know, so you got good lighting and just practice. If, if the video gets decent, then post it. Do another one tomorrow, but you'll get better by doing the activities, not by, like, making the perfect video, right? Same thing. Exactly. Like, you know, you, you probably didn't wait until you had the perfect podcast episode before you started your podcast. You probably just recorded something. You're like, let's do this. Let's put that out. Let's get better tomorrow, right? So... I would take that, that approach and just say like, hey, figure out what you have control over on a day by day basis and like, you know, go after it, put content out, like step outside of your comfort zone, just like you said, Kevin. Man, that's why I wanted you on. That's why I couldn't wait to do this because no one says it better. No one does it better. And we're thankful that you took time to, you know, to, to drop knowledge and to inspire us all. And so I'm going to definitely be sending this everywhere I can because I think the world needs this, um, you know, our industry needs this. So thank you so, so much. Yeah, I want to thank you guys too, man. Because I mean, you and Mike have just uh, just been uh, just ama I think amazing in this industry, right? Because I mean, like you know, neither one of us come from this industry, but we we both involved in the industry now, and um, we recognize very quickly like just how much value you guys put in. And you know, I told you before, like I've never even actually like like looked at your software because I'm, I'm not <laughs> right. <laughs> 
I'm assuming that you guys are really good there because we have so many IEB folks and even bigger companies that use your software. So, you know, and they love it. But what I appreciate about you guys is that you have this perspective of, you know, just viewing things differently in the, in the industry and, and bringing like a, a fresh perspective and a fresh energy and, the, and the, like this, 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 the kind of the, the, the sharing economy, right? The economy of like injecting value. And that's what I really appreciate about you guys. Like I, I know that you guys make great software, but I, I, outside of that, I appreciate you guys as human beings and like how you guys are proactive about bringing value to this industry. So thank you for that. Well, no problem, man. It's mutual. Feelings mutual. I mean, this is a shining example of what we're about. It's like we just we chat, we record it, and we hope someone gets value from it, and we hope that, you know it can make someone smile or feel good or feel like they're ready to take action. So that's that's the point, man. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on, and um, you yeah, know, let me know anytime I can help. Sounds good, brother. We'll talk to you soon. You guys stay safe and uh, keep keep going. We'll do.